lift our voices together in the prayer of invitation, prayer on the, prayer on the projection screens. God, who has taken on the burdens of humanity, Jesus, in whom we see God most clearly, we embrace the mystery of the creation without explaining what dire kind of but by loving, adoring, praising, and serving the word of the human flesh. Bless us with your presence, seen and unseen, as we worship the ears of song and word. Bless us throughout the week, in action and witness. This we pray in the name of Christ, raised from the dead. Amen. We have a lot going on in the life of the church, 
And you can find out what's going on in the calendars for May and June. And we also have an announcement sheet that gives you some additional information about special events as well. In your order of worship, you will find the 2013 Summer Concert Series. This is going to be a wonderful event, and each of you have an opportunity to become a part of the patrons of the arts. So, perhaps to consider as you feel led to do that. Please rise as you're able for our mission and vision statement, and we'll say this together. Our purpose is to develop a passionate followers of Christ through the celebration of worship, the excitement of God's Word, the blessing of God's healing, the rewards of service, the reforming of God's creation, and the joy of fellowship where all are welcome at God's table. We are a loving, open, and affirming church to all people of all races, genders, ages, sexual orientation, professions, previous religious affiliations, nationalities, or mental and physical conditions. Let's pass the peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you. Greet one another.
our reading on this very special Mother's Day Sunday comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verses 16 through 34. <clears throat> One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very hour. But when her owners saw that the hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. <coughs> the crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. <clears throat> After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them secure. <clears throat> Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. May God be blessed the reading of his word. Now, in this very holy time of worship, 
we sail now into this time and place and wonderful building. The names of those for whom we give special thanks and for whom we ask special prayers. Susie. Susie. We also come before you with confession. We confess that Christendom is not one, even though you pray, Jesus, with your disciples, that we might all be one, as you and the Father are one. We are, we confess, divided by barriers we've created, based on our understanding and interpretation, or sometimes by our cussedness and reluctance to give and receive each other. But we reflect that we are all a part of the body of Christ. So we pray now that we may be one in our witness to your kingdom and to your reign, who was and is and who is to come. May we be one in our confession of sin and forgiveness. Spirit who breathes life into all that is seen and unseen, all that is known and not yet known, make us one body, as you are one, Savior, Creator, and Spirit even as together we pray your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Her talents and her treasure freely 
For lo, the 94 years she lived. She exemplified the good and faithful steward as found in the Bible. Now it's our turn to step up and become that faithful and true steward. The same one as my mom, me. Don't go away, Margaret. We have a little something special for you today from the UCC women from the state of Florida who have decided that you are the lay woman of the year for the United Church of Christ in the state of Florida. And we would like to share with you something that you know all about, and that is the things you've done here in the local church over, you ready for this, 57 years. participating in church music, programs including handbells, chants of choir since 1956. She was moderator and served on the pastoral search committee, the music search committee, on three different occasions over those years. She taught weekly kindergarten as a church ministry from 1956 to 1967. She initiated the Peace and Justice Group for the church and community and also sponsored a peace poll for the church. And most of us know, particularly, that she coordinates Roots Ministry, a weekly Thursday feeding program which serves about 110 less fortunate individuals each week. A warm meal is served, a time of worship, devotion, and communion, and a time when Barbara speaks to them about God. She's been an integral part of the annual Toys for Immaculate Children. Our church sponsors toys, as you know, last Year, there were 600 toys that were collected and wrapped and delivered there to the migrant, to the children of migrant farm workers. And she uh, participates in the Adopt a Street program, and she coordinates the monthly Phantom Gallery Cafe, which was where some of you were last night, as a community outreach and also a fundraiser for both fellowship and for Roots Ministry. And she's an integral part of the summer concert series that you can read about that's uh, coming up, which is done mainly not just to entertain you, but for community outreach to get people into the church for that reason, so that they will come back for worship. And she actively participates in the weekly meetings of worship, music, and arts community. So there are lots of things, and they're all symbolized by this special gift also from the Florida Women of the United Church of Christ, and it is the actual symbol of our United Church of Christ. And it's something that you can wear around your neck, I believe. It's very pretty. And it's my honor to bestow it in the name of the Florida Conference of the Women's Fellowship of the United Church of Christ. May God bless and be with you. We all love you.
your bounty and joy. So we pray that you, God of giving, may receive from us and in joy may celebrate with us. In your holy name, amen.
just as you and I are, Father, that just as you are in me and I am in you, so they will be in us. And the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, the glorious unity of being one as we are. I and them, and you and me, all being perfected into one, so that the world will know you sent me and will understand that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I will want them to give me these you've given me, so that they can see my glory. You gave me the glory because you loved me before the world began. O oh, righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know you sent me. And I have revealed you to them, and will keep on revealing you, so that the mighty love you have for me may be in them, and I in them. May God bless this, the reading of his holy word. Did not God look around after parts of his creation 
look around at what he had created and call it good? Yes, he did. So I doubt there will be any major conversions to Gnosticism today. But there's something wonderful about a concept that pulls at our minds and expands our spirits. Jesus, fully human and fully divine, what I call a pleasurable paradox. I come to thinking that you and I are both human and divine. Maybe not fully human, certainly not fully divine, but always a little bit of each. Consider this prayer. Dear Lord, so far today I've done all right. I haven't gossiped, haven't lost my temper, haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. And I'm very thankful for that. But in a few minutes, Lord, I'm going to get out of bed. And then on. <laughs> a little longer today, I guarantee one parishioner that I've had one joke with him. <laughs> Mothers don't need so much help. They, in my opinion, are made of special stuff. Yes, they are material, but they are all but divine. At least mine was. My mother was special. Most of the beautiful things in life, by the way, come by twos and threes, by dozens or hundreds. There are Plenty of roses, plenty of stars, sunsets, rainbows, brothers, sisters, aunts, cousins. But we have only one mother. William Booth, founder of the Salvation Army, said of his mother, and it's interesting for me to come in this morning and find the mail, and there was a letter from the Salvation Army having just written this. Anyway, William Booth, founder of the Salvation Army, said of his mom, to me, she is made of God, never failing sympathy, Reliable wisdom, unvarnished truth. In short, all that is noble and good, and consequently a tower of strength, a mine of wealth, and an ever-flowing fountain of comfort and joy. His mother's qualities passed on to him resulted in the formation of one of the largest distributors of humanitarian aid, the Salvation Army. So this special Sunday, Mother's Day, should not only be a dedication to our mothers, but also a dedication of ourselves to passing on the noble and life-giving qualities that were or are hers, that can change the world, and can change your world, simply because as you give, so shall you receive only more, piled up and overflowing. Simple kindnesses, showing empathy to others, and doing things to give our mothers honor by following their example, most of all. Let me illustrate, as is my custom. An upstate New York man was rich in almost every way. His estate was worth millions. He owned houses and lands and antiques and cattle. Though on the outside he had it all, he was unhappy on the inside, where his wife was growing old and they were childless. He had always wanted a little boy to carry on the family legacy. But miraculously, his wife became pregnant in her later years, and she gave birth to a little boy. But the boy was severely handicapped, but the man loved him with his whole heart. And when the boy was five, his mom died. So the dad drew closer to his special son. But at age 13, the boy's birth defects cost him his life. And the father died soon after, they said, from a broken heart. The estate was to be auctioned off. Hundreds of bidders were there. And the first item offered for auction was a painting of the son, of the boy. No one bid at first. But then the housemaid, who had helped raise the boy and was fond of him, offered five dollars for the painting. No one bid more. Then the auctioneer ripped a handwritten will from the back of the picture opened it and read it to the person who thinks enough of my son to buy this painting to this person i give my entire estate we all need to know that we're cared for and we will be if we are a person who cares for others who sees all people as significant others we are all god's persons to reach out and unfold those around us as our brothers and sisters in the family of God. One thing I like about this church is we're a family. 
We haven't learned to fight like one yet, and hopefully we won't have to. And I, for one, am grateful that God's thoughts are above our thoughts, and that what is difficult for us to conceive is standard operating procedure for God. How Jesus could be fully human and fully divine is, as I say, a pleasurable paradox. Our thoughts and ideas are so different from God's. If we were organizing things when Jesus was to be born, we would have him born in a mansion, not in a stable. And we might well be among those that would ask God to smite our enemies. God calls upon us to love our enemies. That's what God asks. But do we listen? Years ago, a conscientious homeowner wrote to a manufacturer of cast iron pipe, telling that he had found that by pouring pure hydrochloric acid down the drain, he immediately opened the grease-clogged pipes. The plumbing manufacturer wrote back to him saying, the effect of such acid upon ferrous constructed materials is certain to be deleterious. We therefore strongly urge you to cease such activity in the interest and future of your plumbing. He read their letter and he responded, telling them, how relieved he was that he was doing the right thing by putting acid down the drains. So they wrote back to him and they said, we fear that there may have been some miscommunication in our correspondence. Acid of that density applied to cast iron pipes is certain to have dubious results. Therefore, please desist from your current practice. The homeowner read the letter and then wrote back saying he was delighted to learn that he was not harming his pipes. He received one more communication. Don't use acid, it rusts the hell out of the pipes. <laughs> that, by the way, I borrowed from a sermon of mine titled, I Wore the Wrong Ears. I Wore the Wrong Ears. Do we really listen? I had the pleasure one time of hearing theologian Henri Nguyen speak. He told us that the spiritual life is a movement from absurdity to listening. The word absurd comes from the word surdus, which means death. To live a life of absurdity is to remain deaf to the voice of God, calling to us from every movement within all places. Again, let me illustrate it. Learned by this, by the way, how to hear the voice of God. The woman in the hospital said she heard the voice of God, quote, Through the cards that arrived in the mail, I heard God cheering me to get well. Through the flowers, I heard him remind me there's still beauty in the world. In the cry of the woman in the next bed, I felt God open my small heart to a new depth of compassion. And when the nurse rubbed my back, I felt the caress of God's hand upon my life. In all this, God sang to me, it was like music. So Jesus said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. God speaks to us. Is there anything that God cannot speak to us? Is there anything that he cannot teach us? Even the pleasurable paradox? Is there anything he cannot use to teach, heal, guide, and nourish us? Sue Mom Kitt, my often quote, says, God's messages are everywhere, written in the language of raindrops winding down the window. This morning I had to wipe condensation off the windows and the mirrors so I could see where I was going. And sure enough, here came this raindrop going right down the windshield, just like she said. Written in the language of raindrops winding down a window and teardrops winding down a face. The question is whether we will break through our absurdity or deafness and refine our awareness of the whole sounds between the lines of our lives, with the emphasis on our lives, your lives. We always see treasure, the things to treasure, as being apart from us. But they're all around us. We don't have to go anywhere to get them. I have a parable to share with you. A man named Isaac lived an ordinary life in Krakow, Poland. Three times he dreamed that there was a treasure in Prague 
buried under a bridge which led to the king's palace. It was a long journey, but he went, and when he arrived over, he found the bridge constantly guarded by a soldier. And finally, he confided his dream to the man. Ah, oh, you poor fellow, the guard replied. You came here because of that. Why, if I believed in such nonsense, I would have gone to Krakow. When I dreamed three times that there was a treasure buried under the stove in the house of a man named Isaac. And at that, Isaac traveled home, dug up the treasure, buried under the stove in his own house. A fitting parable for our time. So it's time to hear the voice of God in such a time as this, where the bread of life is before you, and as you then tincture it in the wine of foreverness, God speaks. Let me close with this. In the mystical geography of God's love, we are now in Jesus and He in us, just as He and the Heavenly Father are one. As we enter into the sacrament of communion, let us remember that drinking and eating at the Eucharistic table gives us a glimpse of God's future holy city and a taste of His life-giving water. It is a mystical invitation. Remember that this mystical encounter with God's sacramental presence can heal us in every way. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. this sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. And come not because you're qualified by your own righteousness, but come because Jesus has invited you, promising, promising that God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and take away all your unrighteousness. So I invite those who come in this faith to receive this sacrament as we confess our shortcomings to a forgiving Lord. May we pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all persons, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Even the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
join together in the prayer of thanksgiving. <coughs> we praise thee, O God, for this remembrance of thy love for our hearts. Teach us to love thy sacraments above all gifts, thy house above all dwellings, thy scriptures above all books, the communion of saints above all company, and grant that as one family we may give thanks and adore our Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Stand and sing and hold my hand, Lord Jesus. Amen. 